Hey guys, James Diamond here, and in this episode of Tech Tips, I'm going to be showing you some nice, useful techniques and some little tips for the FL Studio workflow. So, just things to help your life be a little bit easier. One of the main things I'm a big advocate for in FL Studio and music production in general is keeping everything organized. And I like to color code things. So, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can color code. First of all, we've got our MIDI clips on the left-hand side here, and if you want to color code all of them, you simply click on the top one that you want to color code, keep them all the same color, and then hold down Shift, left-clicking to highlight all of them, right-clicking, and then rename and color. We don't want to rename them, but we want to color them, so we click on this left-hand toggle here, and I'm going to choose the dark olive green that I've got set up, hit Accept, and then we do it for the right-hand side as well. Click on dark olive green, and then we hit enter, and now it is color coded the MIDI clips. You can also see they've colored the MIDI clips in the actual playlist as well. And in order to get these quickly set up with the names on the left hand side, right click, press A, right click, press A, and so on and so forth. And now we've got the color codes as well as the actual names of the MIDI clips themselves. Likewise, these will then correspond to the color within your mixer channel as well. If we want to then go ahead and do that for the actual loops and the samples themselves, we can then go ahead and uh, hold left click and click all the way up or down, depending on how many you want to highlight. Then we can go up to this little toggle in the top left hand corner. We can then go to color select, there it is. And then we press gradient, but we don't really want a gradient, we just want to have a solid block cover, or you could have a gradient, it's really up to you. We've got on here on the left hand side first, let's change that to dark olive green. And then we're going to go to last. Let's change that to dark olive green as well. And boom, there you go. Everything is being color coded. Another useful technique is to separate out your mixer. Um, and in order to make it a little bit easier to kind of read, right now I've got it set in the large, extra large view, which is a little bit easier. You could then change it to compact so you can see absolutely everything, uh, a little bit easier to kind of see all of your channels. And you've got all of these different ones that you can kind of play around with. Extra large looks quite cool for the purpose of tutorials. And it's a little bit more zoomed in. One more thing that we can go is look at separating our different mixer channels. If you right click on your mixer and press the separator button, it adds this teeny little separator. I like to do these for all the different kind of types of groups. So all of my percussion have now been separated. And then let's go ahead and do it on the kick and the bass. So now we can see this is solely for the kick and bass, this bit for the percussion. And then let's go ahead and add it to all of our effects. So this will be the effects section, just here these three. And then we can do it for our fills as well. It just makes it a little bit easier to see exactly what you're doing. Another useful way to keep your project organized, now that they've gotten rid of all of the kind of legacy blocks, is we want to get rid of this automation. We want to be able to hide it. So we've got our vocal hit here at the top. I want to have all of this automation hidden underneath the vocal hit as it corresponds with that vocal hit itself. So all you need to do, right click, group with track above. Group with above track. Do that on all of them. And now we have this small little upwards arrow. Click this and it will hide your vocal hit. Really, really handy for when you've got a very large project with lots of automation. You can also do this with, say, your playlist tracks for your, um, for your MIDI clips. So I'm going to call this Perk. I'm then going to right click, group with above track, do this for all of my percussion. And then I click the upwards arrow and I can hide the percussion. I could also add in extra sections here which might have some sort of filter or some sort of EQ automation and if as long as I press group with above track I can hide that within all of the percussion playlist clips. So a couple more ways that we can look at in automation, a couple more techniques. If I have something which is quite cool, some automation that I've set up on my kick channel, my kick channel automation, and I want to copy that over to the clap channel volume, I could simply go ahead and right click on each of the nodes and click copy value, right click again, paste in value, and it brings in the exact value here, 78%. And then I could go ahead and do that with each individual one. Or I could do it a much quicker way. I can double click on the automation um, itself and then I'll go up here to the bottom left uh, top left corner and I click on articulator and I click copy state and then I double click on the channel for the 
clap, and then I go to the articulator and paste state. We can then go one step further if we like the sound of the, the way that the volume moves up and down, but we want to scale that just slightly. We can double click onto the automation and we can click on this kind of little um, spanner tool type thing here. And then we can go to scale levels and then we can use the center and the multiply and the offset to start scaling our automation to the way we like it. One more thing that you might want to look at is if you've got two different automation clips. So we want to use this kick automation channel, but we want to make it slightly different somewhere else in the track. We can make a unique automation clip. So we can click on make unique, and then we can delete these automation points and it won't change the one that we have before. Now, one problem that I always find is when you want to maybe move these around in a different place in your project, you have to move them one at a time or you have to highlight them all. Another easy way is to just highlight them and hold uh, Shift and G, and now this will group them together. So all you have to do is click on one section and it will move it all together for you. So another cool technique that we can do with automation, I've got a simple white noise uplifter here. If we go to the top left hand corner of the sample and then we go to automate and panning, let's just bring that down. And then we double click into the automation clip itself. And then we can turn on the LFO, which is gonna create an LFO on the actual panning itself. And then we can manually change how we'd like this to pan um, left and right. We've also got the amounts here as well. So then let's maybe keep the amount at 100 and let's turn the speeds all the way down to zero. Let's then create an automation clip and then let's go from zero to 100%. Pretty cool technique and you can do the exact same thing for the volume. Let's create a volume automation clip. Let's turn on the LFO and then right click on the speed amount. And then let's see how that sounds. A very cool way to get creative with some automation clips. So we've got two leads in this kind of small MIDI pattern, and we want to create an automation clip to control both leads at the same time. We want to control both the cutoffs. One easy way to do this is to go into your first cutoff of your first lead, and then we're gonna create an automation clip. So now we have the automation clip for the first lead. But for the second lead, we want to use the same automation clip. We don't want to have many different ones. One quick and easy way to do this is to again, go to your second lead, toggle whichever one you want to automate. And then instead this time, instead of going to last tweet and pressing create automation clip, we can do, go to link to controller and we want to then click on this internal controller and we should have a big list of automation clips for in this case, we've only got one. We click on lead one, filter control cutoff. We want to make sure that the remove conflicts is turned off, otherwise it won't work. And then we press accept. And now this single automation clip will be controlling both this first lead and the second lead. And this can be done over multiple plugins, not just two, you could have five different leads and they could all be controlled by this single automation clip. So a couple of cool techniques here for working in big projects like this. So for example, we want to add in an extra eight bars in this section here, but we don't want to manually have to cut everything and then highlight and move it all across. One way of doing this a little bit easier is to highlight the section that you want to move to the right. Go to the drop down arrow on the left hand side here, go to edit and then hit slice and insert space. And there we go, it's sliced it and it's kept all the automation in the correct places. Another cool way to go ahead and kind of trial how your track would sound by skipping this section completely altogether without having to actually manually delete anything. We still keep it highlighted like this. We go to the drop down. 
we go to then time markers and we put in a add jump to next bar. As long as you've got it highlighted, like I have done now, it will skip this section altogether. A very handy technique. You can then right click on them to just get rid of them altogether by pressing delete here. So here's a very quick tip when you want to quickly audition different types of um, samples without actually having to manually click and drag it onto the sampler itself. So let's just go ahead and clone this and let's say I want to just audition a load of different closed hi-hat samples. I can have the pattern playing and all I'm going to do is use the mouse wheel on my mouse and I'm going to click that in and it's going to automatically load this sample into the selected sampler track. Very quick and easy, but a very cool technique that helps you just speed up your workflow that little bit more. So let's have a look at a cool technique where we can change audio into MIDI. Now you might want to use this technique when you want to find out the MIDI of say a sample that you have, if it's some sort of pluck or arp or some sort of bass line or even a vocal. We want to find out what the MIDI is so we can then either change it or go ahead and add it to our own synth. Um, I would say that it needs to be a dry sample. It kind of gets a little bit tricky, a little bit awkward in the conversion process when it's wet. So when it's got reverb or delay or any other sort of effects on, it doesn't always work properly. Um, you might have to go into the MIDI and kind of um, work out where it's gone wrong. But with dry samples, it works really well. So I've got two set out for us already. And I've got the top one preloaded into Edison here. So what we want to do is we want to take this dry um, ARP and we want to turn it into MIDI. So let's just have a quick listen to see what that sounds like. So pretty simple, nothing much going on. We want to find out what that is. We don't want to spend time actually manually working it out. So all we need to do is I've got a pluck set up already on silent. And in order to make sure that the MIDI goes to the correct place, we want to make sure that we've got the pluck on the synth highlighted. We don't want to make sure that the actual sample itself is highlighted here. We want to make sure that it's the pluck instead. So what we need to do is we click on the little spanner icon here and then we simply do convert to score and dump to piano roll. And now if we have a listen to what this pluck has, uh, what is kind of converted and what the pluck's going to play. Pretty much perfect. So then you might want to go in and as we can see these top notes are just a little bit longer and then maybe we would want to just completely level off all of the velocity control there. So let's go ahead and do that with the second pattern. Let's just bring that into Edison. Okay, now let's have a quick listen to that. So a little bit more complex. Now let's go back to our pluck make sure we've got it highlighted on here. And then let's go to the little spanner and convert to score and dump to piano roll. And now let's have a listen. Pretty much absolutely bang on. We can see here that this note is just slightly off so we can just quantize it or we can just do control A and then control Q to quantize the entire MIDI. So let's have a look at how we can create a reverse vocal on FL Studio. Reverse vocals are usually used at the start to introduce a vocal or they might be used in between phrases themselves. Let's have a quick listen to the vocal that we want to reverse. Silent whispers, voices that carry no sound. So we want to start the uh, reverse, um, we want to create the reverse from the start of the word silent here. So I've got this uh, vocal preloaded into Edison 
And what I want to do is I want to uh, zoom in all the way to the beginning, and I just want to grab the first part of the vocal. Silent, silent. So what I'm looking for here is I just want to grab the first part of the word silent, and I want to grab the first tone that she actually sings, which is this very first section here. Silent, silent. So as we can hear, she's pretty much singing the exact same tone throughout that entire section. So let's go ahead and trim the rest of this uh, audio. So we just go to edit and then trim. Now we've just got this section of the audio. Silent. And now what we want to do is add some reverb. We can click this button here or we can or press Control R. And this is going to add the reverb. Let's add, uh, we've got the wet up there to so about 56, 60%. We want to make sure that the tail is on so that we record the tail. Let's have a listen. Sound. Sounding good. Now let's press accept. And there's the sample itself. Let's have a listen. Sound. So as we added the tail, uh, which is record, we can see that it's added it there. Now all we need to do is hold Alt and Left on the uh, on the control, uh, on the keypad, on the arrows, and then that flicks it around to reverse it. And now all we need to do is just simply drag and drop it into the project. Let's move all of these across slightly. And now we've got our reverse reverb of our vocal. But we want to then go ahead and just slightly pull the front of it back a little bit because we're going to still hear the um, the kind of sibilance of the word silence on the S and then let's maybe overlap it slightly. Silent whisper. Almost there, let's maybe just bring that back slightly. Silent whispers. Sounding pretty cool, we can go one step further and we can actually overlap the two, and then we're gonna use an automation to just smoothen out the ending there so it doesn't sound too abrupt. Silent whispers. And that's sounding a lot nicer and a lot smoother. Very cool and very easy technique. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.